Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch and co-host Calder Ness. This is episode 313. We are joined by special guest Hyper Tucsonic Custom Clicks. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. The Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Those hot singles are in Justice League Unlimited. Check it out. Cool Stuff Inc. Get them. Pick them up. Like I said, joining me in the studio, like every week, sadly, is my nemesis, Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Oh, you know, a lot of stuff. I just all the stuff. All right, you are technically not wrong, and we are so awesomely joined. Special guest, Hyper Two Sonic Clicks. How is it going, my man? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on. Do you want me to keep calling you by that, or are we good with <laughs> first name basis here? Uh, first name basis is good. That's- okay. So, aka Paul, my man. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. We're gonna do a pretty simple interview here, really quick. Uh, just to get to know All you, right. get to know you better, you know, before our relationship can really start, you know, favorite <laughs> movie, all that stuff, long walks on the beach. Uh, but I'll go ahead and throw you the first one here. How slash when did you get into Hero Clicks? All right. So I got into Hero Clicks at probably 2005 or 2006. Uh, my friend Perry told me about it and then he gave me like a bag full of stuff and a pack and then we'd talk about it at work. And then the first event I went to was the uh, Origin release day event, and I've been in it since then. Wow. <laughs> that is a lot longer than me and Simeon have been playing. Like, that, you beat me by six years then. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I don't even think Simeon, I've ever the next anything question. out of Origin. Origins? Um, Origins, yeah. Yeah. Um, so what are you, what are your some of your favorite pieces or like combos that you like to throw together? Of uh, I'd say my favorite combo that I've ever used like just for fun is using the recorder 451 with any Iron Man mm. oh, and yeah. then just trying to get that that last power out of his last click to go off. That's just really fun to do. That's one of my favorite things to try. Well, that's why you just got to trick your judge into playing a reverse dial <laughs> format and then he that's just right. starts on that. Yeah. Yeah, I just I just like going, oh, you're sure you want to hit him for three? <laughs> <laughs> and he's and old enough to like, check his uh, dial. So. That's, right, That's right, yeah. Uh, but that old school, like, golden age strategy, I'm well, sorry. I mean, you can look at the card all you want, but it's not going to help you. Sorry, man. <laughs> it's the way it is. Yeah. Uh, so typically, are you more of a meta or casual player? I'd say I'm a lot of both. Uh, there's a lot of – there's a pretty good uh, – competitive scene down here in arizona in uh tucson where i'm at i have a little a group of friends and then uh, a lot of the events are held up in phoenix and there's a lot of cool guys up in phoenix so it's fun to go up there and play with them but mostly Uh, at at the venue week to week is casual stuff okay right on that's you (laughs) sim man (laughs) (laughs) speaking of uh, a you know favorite uh like meta and uh casual what's your favorite kind of format to play so my favorite format that i will cancel what i'm doing to go play that they do down here is they do kill it and keep it battle royals where the venue will just throw down all the extra le's that they've had over the year or whatever and then you buy a booster and then whatever you kill in the middle you get to keep and that's just a lot of my favorite hero clicks memories are for games like that and it's fun just walking out with like 10 prize figures or whatever nice that actually sounds pretty freaking awesome i've never played that format but it does sound great it's a lot of fun and you know speaking of your venue what is your usual venue down there so i play at tucson games and gadgets in the park place mall uh clint is the judge down there and then i'll give a shout out to the other guys on our team so that's aaron hector and Anthony, all pretty cool guys. They let me borrow a lot of their stuff. So 
it's a pretty good team we got going down here. All right, right. On. The best kind of friends let you borrow stuff. That's what. That's ninety percent of my relationship with some of the people like where where I live. It's like, hey man, I don't own all these whatever X Men IDs, Collins and stuff. Can I like borrow them for this team? Yeah, thanks, dude. All right, cool, appreciate it. So yeah, no, I love it. I love borrowing stuff. So I think it's been uh, about seven years now since I was in Arizona, but I think I went to, like Samurai Comics and I picked up some hero clicks there or something like that. I don't know if they're still in business or not, but like I think they are. Okay, right on. That was a pretty cool store. That was, I think, it was the one place I went to in Phoenix for like comic book shop wise. Yeah, yeah. The store that gets all the stuff, all like the ROCs and Wiz Kids opens, is the Orc Slayer. Okay. And all the guys there, um, Vic and Ben, Evan, Alex, they're all really cool guys. So it's fun to go up there. Absolutely, right on. So. For people that don't know, we kind of just did like, this is kind of our standard interview, pretty formulaic for just any listener we have on, but you make uh, beautifully sculpted like custom hero clicks on your Facebook, on your Facebook page. Like we said, hybrid to Sonic custom clicks, check it out on Facebook, give it a like, give it a follow. I absolutely love a lot of stuff, like the, the wrestling stuff you do, like Velveteen Dream, he creeps me out, but like it's a beautiful <laughs> custom you made. And then your Fiend and Bray Wyatt are so great. So yeah. Kind of uh, walk us through uh, what, how you would attack. Like, you're about to make a new custom figure. Like, where do you start, kind of? So, first, I want to figure out whether I can uh, use, like, an existing figure and just mod that, or if I have to start from scratch. So, it depends on, like, how fast I want to get it done and if I can find something that is going to, like, work right away. So, like, for uh, The Fiend, there's... Uh, the saber tooth from UXM, I think, is the base for him. So really, all you have to do is just like add add to it, and that's uh, that's like the fun part is trying to visualize it, and then when it turns out good, you just, I just get excited about it. And I do it a lot for myself. I haven't sold a, a whole ton of stuff, but it's yeah, it's just it's cool to like go back and look at the first ones I've done and then how I'm getting better and better at it over time. So that's part of it too. Okay. Right on. And Simeon, I'm just going to keep going and you just interject and interrupt me. (laughs) I don't have to tell you to interrupt me, but I, I know like the sea King, you can kind of tell, I think he's, uh, is he like ego prime? He's one of the colossals from infinity. Yeah. Yeah. Like the Kronos, I think. Okay. The Kronos with the the blue effect. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of my favorite ones, but that's all I had Dude, to say. That is great. Yeah. That is great. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to all mention right. that when we were on the topic of uh, using like effects and stuff from yeah figures. So you do like a lot, quite a few anime figures, and I know there's been a huge calling in the HeroClix community to get like literally any anime at, like at all, like all clicks. Right. If you could choose any any anime to be made into a HeroClix set, what would it be? Oh man. Um... There's so many good ones. There's, they all have so many characters. I'm a really big Dragon Ball guy. I love One Punch Man. I think either of those would be good. Naruto is great. It's hard to choose one. It is. No, it is tough. I know I, I love One Punch Man too, so I would totally dig a One Punch Man set. It would be great. Super overpowered Saitama. Like, right. be amazing. Amazing. Yeah, I'm working what? right now. I got, uh, I'm doing the, the Chiranko Saitama. Mm. Okay. And I just I rewatched season two, so I was like, "Yep, I got to. I have to do that." All right. Yeah. <laughs> so, what was uh, the favorite custom you've made so far? Where you've like, like maybe it wasn't like the hardest one to build, but just like you just really like looking at it. Maybe it's more unique than the other ones or something. But, like, what's your like personal favorite like kind of shelf piece? Well, they're all shelf pieces. Let me let me say that first. But like, <laughs> what's like your favorite custom you've made? I think the favorite one I've made is the the cooler from Dragon Ball Z. It's taken me the longest time. It's got the light built into it. It's pretty big. Uh, it's just, I don't know. I just think that one's one of the cooler ones to look at for sure. But I'm... <laughs> uh, I think my favorite one that you've got on here... Actually, I've got two. Uh, God Emperor Doom, just because... Like I knew the, you'd say that. The sculpt is like just like really cool. I'm not sure. It looks like you used foam and then you painted over it. I don't know how that works at all, but yeah. that's kind of what it looks like for the the Groot tree. And then yeah. Uh, so what's 
so yeah for that i i took like the uh um floral foam or whatever like florists stick the flowers into and i just kind of carved that out and then it oh. took forever but i took green stuff and like flattened it out into like a thin layer and then kind of layered it over all of that so it wouldn't like fall apart right because it's a really crumbly material. and that just took that took forever yeah but that's yeah the the doom sitting in there he's 100 percent custom yeah so yeah that's i'm still not done with it that's one that sits there and i'm like yeah it's not quite done yet <laughs> one of these days i oh, will finish it yeah. we'll finish it we'll get there that one and then uh powdered toast man of course like just a good old run and stimpy character <laughs> <laughs> yeah i uh yeah, okay i'll really quick i'm gonna interject my favorites uh, I really dig uh, Polnareff and the Silver Chariot you did, how Silver Chariot can go on uh, Polnareff's base. I think that's so cool. And then the Joseph Joestar with the Oh My God effect <laughs> is so great. It's so great. No, yeah. I absolutely love those. Yeah, Joseph's my favorite. That That's another one where I'm like, eh, it's not done yet. <laughs> yeah. Are you know, like, has maybe to be add perfect. Like, a, like Hermit Purple or something to it would be really cool. Or yeah, like. Good. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. That was a that was one that is just kind of the light went off. Like, oh yeah, that's a great idea. Oh yeah. So like one where if you wanted to do another kind of bigger scale one, and this is just me spitballing, but like a really cool like custom. Like if I had any form of skill, would be like Dio with the uh, the road roller. Right? <laughs> the road like, roller. Still, like drop it. Yeah, like, I think that would be hilarious. Like a great one to build. Oh yeah, that would be so, pretty funny. What was like the the one that's taking you the longest? I know you say you have a lot that are just kind of like work in progresses at all, but like what's one where like you kind of kept track of the hours and have been like, man, this is taking me forever. But like when you got it done, you're like every second was just perfect for it. Oh yeah, well the the cooler one I started that like really early on, so that's probably took me two years to finish. Like where I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna work on that anymore. But that's it kind of been your long- like off and on labor of love type deal. Right. Or yeah. Yeah, it just, yeah, it takes me a long time because you can only like if you try to work too much with the green stuff, you like put something on his leg and you're like you got like 45 minutes into his leg and then you're like, "Okay, I'm going to go this other arm." And then you stick your thumb in the leg and then you just, all your work is evaporated. <laughs> so you have to like be patient and work on it a little bit at a time. So it takes a long time to get anything done really. Gotcha. So green stuff for people that don't know, that's like a sculpting putty basically right. used, right? Okay. Yep. And it I cures pretty sure. fast. I haven't it's pretty good because if there's it's pretty easy to chop back up if you put something on you didn't like and it's really, really good to work with. And then okay, since so you use to sculpt, what are the like the paints that you use? Like what are your recommended paints for people that might want to be uh painting miniatures? Uh, so that the painting thing is something I'm just getting more into now too. So before all my early stuff, I was just using like the Walmart 50 cent acrylic paints. Mm. So, and then uh, for Christmas, I used the money my mom gave me to buy like a pack of model colors and those work yeah. a lot better. So if you're serious about painting, getting the, uh, like the hobby paints is definitely worth it. Gotcha. Right on. Um, Simi, you got anything? No, I'm just, I just like to. So useless. I would just I go and like list off all the characters. Um, I did notice for Koro Sensei, you've got a custom like dial, and um, he's like a title character. Do you do that? For yeah, a lot yeah. Of so them? that's. Well, that's how it started. Was um, before I started sculpting and stuff, I would make like the uh, like the custom dials. I did a lot of the old dial H dial design contests way Ooh. back in the day. So that's what got me started. Like I would make something really cool, like the Coral Sensei, and I'm like, well, now I want to actually play it. So Coral Sensei was one of the first ones I actually built, and then I eventually went through and made all his student pogs, and I got to play it, and it was actually pretty fun. I lost, so that means I didn't make the dial too overpowered. So that's good. Yeah, I used the, to do this contest all the time. Sweet. Those were so great. So he's a, he's a title character and like he's got a lot of like interesting powers. He doesn't look too overpowered for his point cost, but yeah, it's definitely like a something that'd be like super unique to be able to play. Yeah, it was fun. Well, absolutely, right on. Well, 
I think that pretty much gives us a really good idea. Like I said, Hyper to Sonic custom clicks. You do commissions, right? So if anyone reaches out to you, sees all the awesome work you do, you just go ahead and message the page. Get in, get in contact with Paul here. He'll be able to hook you up, right? Yeah, sure. Anything that you see on there, I'll probably sell to you. Uh, if you want something uh, new, it depends on uh, how detailed you want it to get or if I could make it just with a modded figure or not. But I don't charge very much, but you're going to pay in the time it takes me to get it done. So if you're willing to wait for a while, but get something really nice in return, go ahead and message me. Awesome. Uh, because we kind of skipped it earlier, we're going to go ahead and go into what made us happy this week. And I kind of like doing this after the interview anyways. Gives us a better idea. So, Simeon, why don't you start us off? What made you happy, my man? What made me happy this week was I went on a run and... <laughs> For like three days afterwards, my legs have been hurting. So, <laughs> just uh, it's a nice. I haven't been to the gym in quite a while now, so it's no, nice to like tell. feel the burn. <laughs> can you? Can you? <laughs> uh, it's yeah, nice to you can tell you know, with your voice. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, just the you like the strain that you like put on yourself. It's sometimes nice to remember what it feels. I don't know. Like I don't to, think uh... <laughs> Do you like? Do you like like the burn that the gym gives you? Like when you feel like just completely like wiped after a good workout. Me, yeah, I absolutely love it. It's the best. Like, and when I'm sore the day after, it's great. Not my legs though. I'm not a crazy person who doesn't who like wants to walk around like so. They're, yeah, you know, a newborn deer on ice. Like, but, I don't. I don't you know, want to get on that. too much of a tangent. But I have had this discussion where like some people are like, "Oh, I hate that. Why do you like it?" And it's just like, well, like makes me think like. I don't know if it's true or not, but it makes me think or feel like I actually got a decent workout in. Accomplished. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. No, like I if I'm, I if totally I'm not sore, it. then I feel like I cheated myself, so. Sure. You you were quite literally that meme. I don't know if you've seen this meme or not, but uh, it's like the government tells you you can't go outside. People that haven't jogged in three years, and it's like <laughs> that dude jogging. is like, yeah, that's literally Simeon. Okay, good to know. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Paul, what made you happy this week? All right, so what made me happy was uh, we got back from my brother's wedding. My brother Thomas got married last weekend, and I got to take my son to Kentucky, and he got to meet uh, my grandma, his great-grandma, for the first time, and get to see his uh, nana and all his uncles and cousins for the first time, so that was a lot of fun. That does. That sounds awesome. Man, oh, man. Congratulations to your brother on getting married. You know, hey, it's a big day. It's important, so... That's pretty sweet. Yeah, it was pretty funny, too, because the, the ceremony was just a trip. It oh, might oh a viral, yeah. <laughs> it might be a viral video one day, so people uh, look out. <laughs> All right, we'll do wedding fails, something like that. Keep that, like, safe <laughs> search on YouTube. Yep. Uh, what made me happy this week was my sister came to town, and she likes anime. We, we've talked already too much anime on this podcast for a superhero miniatures game. Um, but I made her watch all of part one and like half of part two of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure because she really hates how much I like that show. Um, but now she likes it, so I got her. So yeah, absolutely. You, you, you got to get through the first couple, and then you're then you're hooked. Yeah, you do. Or, you or do. You no, it was rough. With, uh, Stardust Crusaders and just no, I can't do that. Skip the. Uh, that's no what my wife. Skip, no part skipping in my house. I'm sorry. <laughs> Not gonna happen. I suffer, you suffer. That's how. That's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and jump into, we got, we're going to play two awesome games this week, Bad Samaritan and Casual Comparisons. So let's go ahead and start off with Casual Comparisons. I don't know. Fly casual. Casual Comparisons, we casually, ooh, ah, compare. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, a comic figure. So we're taking off, like, the idea is not necessarily what's, like, the best version of this Heroclix figure, but specifically, which one represents the comic book character um, the best in Heroclix. This week, we are covering Baron Zemo, specifically helmets. I'm going to read a quick little blurb here so helmet zero aka the 13th baron zemo heinrich zemo's son who was born in leipzig germany his father taught him the idea of the master Ooh, we shouldn't have, we shouldn't have went with this wikipedia article actually uh, <laughs> <laughs> leader of the thunderbolts and masters of evil baron zemo has run in with the avengers and captain america throughout most of his lifetime sometimes being betrayed by his own team what a guy what a what a competent leader old helmet is uh, I think one of my favorite betrayals is when like Sin just leaves him in the middle of the desert, like right at the beginning of uh, 
fear itself. That's just great. That's great. Or like when he actually starts to enjoy being a good guy as Citizen V. Yeah. Helmet's a sweet, sweet character. So why don't we have Paul start with your pick for Baron Zemo here? All right. So I went with the Captain America and the Avengers LE number 100 Baron Zemo. Um, he has Hydra, Masters of Evil, Thunderbolt, Scientist. He's 75 points. He's got a trait. Destroying the Avengers is the only first step. Leadership, so traded leadership. When Baron Zemo uses it and succeeds until your next turn, friendly characters with the Masters of Evil keyword can use improved movement, uh, blocking, and destroys it. And all team abilities, opposing characters can use that aren't uncopyable. So that's pretty cool, traded leadership. He has the assembled bolts and masters. So if you hit, you get to roll, maybe take a token off. And his uh, defense, he has a special power. I've been planning this for decades. Combat reflexes, mastermind, and willpower, which is nice to have with that Masters of Evil team ability that he also has. And then his dial is actually pretty uh, synergistic, more than some of the other ones. So he starts with stealth. Uh, psychic Blast, that special defense power, so combat reflexes and stealth is always good. And then Outwit, and then uh, he's six clicks long, so the first three clicks are all those same powers, then the last three, he has Plasticity, Poison, and Combat Reflexes. So if you get close and punch him from being in stealth, you might be taking Poison the next turn. It gets so much worse. It becomes like one of the better tie-up pieces, too. Like, ah, you fool! Fell right into my trap. <laughs> Yeah, and with that special leadership, we've got, like, so many things that can help leadership out now. There's, like, the new uh, Latveria map. Um, there's, like, several Star Trek and, like, other random characters that can help with, like, leadership roles. So it'd be pretty pretty easy to, like, ensure that you uh, can get that to pull off. Yep. Right. Simeon... What about your pick? Who's your Baron Zemo you chose this week? I went with Baron Zemo number 041. He's a rare from Chaos War. So this guy clocks in at 100 points. He's got six range, one lightning bolt. He's got willpower his first two clicks with uh, some stealth top dial, and then he goes to running shot, psychic blast. And his dial's kind of all over the place between combat reflexes, willpower, but it stays in like the 17, 16 range for most of it. And then his last two clicks, he gets Charge Blades with Prob, which back in the day, you could re-roll your blades, so that would have been a little bit better back then. Now it's just ensuring you uh, actually hit. Um, I do like some of his... some of the uh, flavor text that he has on his powers. So he's got, like, Public Display of Heroism is his running shot, and uh, the 13th Baron is his Blades Claws, so... Mm. Just stuff like that. Um, but then, uh, let's see here. He's got one thing that makes him real good is his singular trait. That is the Thunderbolts Gambit. When you build your force, characters that possess the Masters of Evil keyword or team ability also possess the Thunderbolts keyword. If your force includes the Thunderbolts additional team ability, you must assign it to them. Because people use mm. ATAs still, I guess. I, I don't know. Um, and then he had a single special damage power on his first three clicks, and that was Megalomaniac Genius. Baron Zemo can use Leadership, Mastermind, and Outwit. He is considered 150 points when using Leadership or Mastermind if he's adjacent to a character with the Thunderbolts keyword. So just a, a big boost on leadership potential, but you're probably running a th theme team with him. So his leadership would work either way, regardless of points. Same with Mastermind. Uh, right. It's just one of those older figures that wasn't, you know, it had the special rules. It made sense at the time. But obviously, since they changed, it just means they work normally, really. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, dude, right on. Uh, I kind of failed to mention this earlier, but because of Wikipedia didn't have it. But Baron Zemo's like basic power set is he is just kind of like a dude. He has a gun, he has a sword, but he's more like a mastermind for the Thunderbolts and uh, Masters of Evil. So that's why you're going to find a lot of similar powers here on this uh, on these dials. I decided to actually go with a Citizen V version of Helmet Zero because I've kind of been waiting on a new Citizen V since the old Avengers, since I found out like that's the only one that exists is the old Avengers one, which isn't bad. He actually has solid, solid stats, 
But uh, I like this Citizen V just more. So this is the uncommon one from Captain America and the Avengers. He's 50 points, no range. I don't remember if he actually had a gun, a Citizen V. I just know he had the sword. So I don't think he had a gun at the time. No special combat symbols. Celebrity martial artist, Thunderbolts, and V Battalion. Uh, I like him mostly because he has his... Uh, he has the assembled bolts of Master Straight, which is just the same thing. You know, taking tokens off or giving tokens to other people. He has charged blades, combat reflexes, first three clicks. And he goes flurry blades with some willpower and outwits on his last two clicks. He has a special attack power, Master Swordsman. Precision strike, blades cause fangs, but instead he rolls 2d6. And you choose one as a result, which is always nice. But the main reason I really like him is his, uh, if you play him at 75 points, he has the reveal myself to the world trait. And when he would be KO'd, instead you replace him with a uh, one of the Baron Zemos from the Captain America set on his last non-KO click, roll a d6, heal that character equal to after result. So it's a weird workaround type deal like Living Legend is. So I just really like this Citizen V. He feels very thematic when he finally comes out. And you're like, oh, what? That was Baron Zemo the whole time. Bad guy. <laughs> Mind blown. So I really dig this one. And that is going to kind of end the talking about the dials. We move on into the voting segment, which is where we hope that maybe the other ones, you know, the guys in the show swayed someone else since from their talking of such a dial, such high yeah. prestige of debate of this casual comparisons is. So we'll go back to the order we started. Paul, uh, who gets your vote? Uh, you can vote for yourself, too. It doesn't. That's okay. I think I'm, I'm actually going to vote for Simeon's, the, the rare... His sculpt is by far the coolest Baron Zemo sculpt. And uh, being able to combine the, the keywords, uh, it's just, it's something I always, it's one of the first things I, I try to do whenever we're building for whatever it is. Is it, if can I make a Thunderbolts team? But uh, that's definitely, if he just had better stats and cost less, I mean, the newer ones tried to do the same thing, but boost that stuff, but the original is still pretty good. For sure. Okay. I, I did not Simeon. mention that, but his his sculpt is really cool. It's a uh, him standing on like I, I don't remember if it's like a chapel steeple, but it's like a big cross, and then he's got uh, some terrain underfoot with his gun out. I imagine it's like his dad's grave or something, since it says Zemo on it. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Either that, or he just like. <laughs> oh, does Zemo? I've, I've, I've never looked that closely a cross at or something <laughs> carved into it. Hey, check it out. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've seen it before. I wouldn't know if I didn't click on the um, digital image they have on HC Realms. But it is a beautiful sculpt. Yeah, I have it right in front of me. That It is really, really nice. Okay, Simeon. I'm actually going to go with Paul's choice, the uh, the LE, because um, I just think it's with the, the leadership thing is a little bit better, uh, like mid-game kind of thing with it traded. His dial's way more reliable, and uh, he's just a very well point costed uh, like leader for a team. Um, he's easy to like build the rest of your team around, and uh, he does all the things that Zemo should. Okay, right on, guys. I always got to make me do this this tricky tricky choice. I'm going to vote for myself. No. Um, so <laughs> I do like Zemo having stealth, like starting off with stealth. I just feel like that fits him a lot. But uh, one of my favorite comics is when he like captures, I don't remember who he captures. Some, some member of the Avengers is like Wolverine or something. Who knows uh, at the time, but like robots like pop out of the walls. And that's what it feels like when I play the, the LE Baron Zemo, when you get to destroy all the blocking terrain. So, and he was actually going to be my pick until Paul chose. I mean, guest always gets to pick first, but I kind of had a, a Baron Zemo in mind. So I'm going to have to vote for the LE too. Cause I really, really like this Baron Zemo and he feels like Zemo to me for sure. Yeah. So, and all this is, all this is with the caveat that the superior foes of Spider-Man should be helmet Zemo, but they call it Heinrich Zemo. Yeah, that is true. That would have been my first choice for sure. Mine too, for sure. That plus one uh, attack and sidestep for your whole force is pretty sweet. It is. I don't know what they were thinking because it looks it's helmet's costume, like period. So I don't know oh, yeah, why right. the real name is Heinrich Zemo, and it clearly is supposed to be helmet, but it's yeah, right. it is so weird. The but significant yeah, appearance is helmet. The picture of the comic on the back is helmet. It's weird. <laughs> Whiskey's had a downstairs mix-up. Wow, color. Yeah, sure it is. 
But all right, your casual comparisons. Official Dial H for Hero Clicks is going to be the Captain America and the Avengers LE 100 Baron Zemo. Moving us right along, we get to go into the game that has been sweeping the nation since 2013, Bad Samaritan. Bad Samaritan is a hero clicks guessing game. There will be three figures, so each of us has a chance to score a point. There will also be a tiebreaker at the end in case we all somehow score a point and tie up the game. Simeon and Paul will sort of be on a team, but not really. Try to guess the figure that I'm giving them clues for. There's going to be three rounds for each figure. Each round, they will get a random clue on 1 through 20. The last four are free plays. And... Then with each clue, they'll have one round of guessing. They'll each get one guess. If they don't get it that round, we go on. They get a second clue. They each guess a figure again. And then third round, same thing. First verse, second, whatever. Same as the first. A little bit louder, a whole lot worse. They get another clue. They now have three clues. And if they can't guess the figure by then, I will get a point. If Paul or Simeon guess the figure at any in, in any of those rounds, uh, they, one of them, will specifically get the point if they guess the figure right. And that is very simply Bad Samaritan. Once I give the clue if the player wants to uh not the player but the listener wants to pause this show and try to formulate their own guess to before you know simeon and paul probably just totally throw them off on the wrong track just i don't know you guys i mean i know simeon i know i know he'll screw him up so if you want to do that formulate your own guess hit play and then see how much they butcher it or maybe get it right right away we've had some crazy surprises recently in bad samaritan so anything can happen Simeon, you got a random random generator, 1 through 20. This is the first round, the first figure. Give us the first clue. Clue number 15. Number 15, Burger King Foot Lettuce. No, it's actually opening defense power, and it is a special defense power. And I'll read you the name of the special defense power. It's I'm No One Important. What's the name of the power? I'm no one. <laughs> oh, I thought you were just saying that. I just... Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, Simeon. Okay, okay, Simeon. Uh, I got him. Uh, <laughs> man, I... I want to say it's like a... The only kind of character that has like that mentality would be like Peter Parker. Um, where it's like, I'm no one important. Uh, but uh, like the Eeyore thing um, oh sure yeah i don't know uh, i was thinking like uh like a dc like a policeman type character like a generic kind of thing yeah maybe that would make sense too um man i'm just gonna throw a guess out I'm trying to think of trying to think of first of all like what that power would even entail like what that would give a character uh it's obviously more than one defense power but man um i'll go i think i'll go i'll go commissioner gordon okay commissioner gordon locked in i'll double down with that and uh do harvey bullock going for harvey bullock oh and like always i failed to mention this but we always do modern age figures for bad samaritan so commissioner gordon and harvey bullock locked in it is going to be neither of those you're gonna have to go to round two all right round two second First, clue uh, is gonna second be clue. second clue number yeah. 12 Number 12 is going to be any special combat symbols. Flip the card over here. This character does not have any. Well, yeah, because they're no one special. Uh, Fun. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) No one special has no special combat symbols. Oh, man. Uh, Well, that does mean that there's no endom. So we're kind of on the right track with like a a weaker character, like a maybe a generic kind of dude. Um, yeah, someone that like doesn't have powers at all. It's like Constantine would be a decent like character that might say something like that, 
but he, they, we don't have a modern one, so that wouldn't right. make any sense. Um, man, I will I will throw out Spider Man just in case there's like a Earth X one that I'm not thinking of that maybe going for the Spider Man guess. Okay, locked in. And that'll cover all characters named Spider-Man in modern age. So it's a safe guess. It's a safe guess. There's a lot. All right. I I think I'll go Harvey Dent just to stick with our original track of taking. One for Spider-Man, one for Harvey Dent. It is going to be neither of those. Round three. Last clue is going to be number 19. Number 19 is a free play. Popular free plays include, uh, let's see, what are ones that you actually people hate? Uh, improved movement or targeting? Uh, no, okay. <laughs> so let's actually go with some good free plays. People like to do name of trait sometimes. Uh, set helps narrow down the field a little bit. Named keyword can sometimes help people. Uh, I have also added significant appearance. Uh, to the list of free plays uh, slash just clues overall point value can sometimes help people um, stuff like that and I can read all of them off if you want me to but those are some of the uh, big ones let's do name of character <laughs> mm. once Agreed. again not a clue very sorry to inconvenience you Simeon how about set okay set the set is going to be secret wars battle world Secret oh, Wars okay. Battle World. Oh, Special. okay. Um, I think it's it's got to be Tony Stark, inventor or whatever his name was, right? Uh, you're supposed to tell me, Simeon, and then I will then <laughs> well, tell you. I'm you can't say with, right. I'm confirming okay. with Paul. Oh, does, okay. Does okay. he? Are you aware of like? I don't know. I think he's got like something like that where, um. He just like starts off as like normal perplexed dude, and then if he dies, he can turn into Iron Man. Can he? I don't know. I I don't know. I'm trying to think of. There's a lot of very unnormal guys in that set. It's true. Um, Kazar might be. Hey, oh, I think I might go Chase Stein. Gotcha. So, Simeon, are you locked in for Iron Man? I'm gonna go with yeah that Tony not Stark Iron Man, or Iron, or which, yeah, Tony Stark. whatever his name was yeah. Okay, well don't say whatever his name was. Do you know? <laughs> yeah, you Tony sure? Stark, I believe. <laughs> okay, so one, locked in for Chase Stein and Tony Stark. It is gonna be Simeon getting a point and winning the first round. It is Tony Stark right. the inventor. All I think right, that's like the first Second point I've gotten in in uh, like five games. Yeah, it's been a hot minute. It's, been, it's, it's pretty rough for you, man. been on a pretty dry streak. All right. Round two. Figure two. Or figure two. Round one of clues. First clue for round two is number four. Number four is going to be number of clicks. This character has six clicks of life. So their first KO is on click number seven. That is the most average amount of clicks. Boy. Um... <laughs> That's such an awful number. I'll just throw out Batman. Cause Ooh, Batman. Yeah, I'm sure that's like his What average. a guess, what a gander. Alright, I'll burn Spider-Man. Locked in for Spider-Man, locked in for Batman. It is going to be neither of those. <laughs> Second clue, number five. Number five is going to be rarity and set numbers. So this is 028, a rare. Rarity. 028, a rare. Seems like a smaller set, right? I think most sets have like a... Like their uncommons go up to like the 28, kind of 30 range. Um, yeah. It's not it's bigger than a gravity feed, though. So... <laughs> hmm... Zero twenty-eight rare. I'm gonna say something from like X-Men because that set was like split between the singles and the colossals. So maybe something uh, yeah. from X-Men or AI. Uh, Not AI anymore. 
Is oh, it? Yeah. No, it's not July 1st yet, right? Yeah, it's not July. Okay, so Ooh. AI is still legal? Still modern? AI is absolutely still legal, yes. Uh, oof. I wish I could remember any of the like numbers from the rares. I'm going to go with Mesmero from Mesmero. X-Men Dark Phoenix because I pulled so many of them that okay. uh, maybe he can redeem <laughs> himself for me. <laughs> Alright, uh, Simeon okay. locked in with Mesmero. I'll follow behind you with uh, Phantasma or whatever her name is. <laughs> okay. Phantasm, I think. Okay. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. I don't know why I would know that offhand. Uh, <laughs> Mesmero and Phantasm or Phantasma, whatever you, however you say it, it is going to be Neither of those. Round three. Third clue right. is going to be number 14. Number 14 is going to be opening attack power. This character has incapacitate. Ooh, uh, ah. <laughs> Good. Um, Jeez. Six clicks <laughs> long. Opening incapacitate. Oh, man. I'm trying to think. Batman Animated is still in the running. And it would still be in the running. Even yeah, after. Yeah, life. even after. Yeah, good one, Simeon. Oh, no. I think you're on the right track with it. What is it, with 27 or 28 rare? It's probably AI or Enix Saga. 28. I just don't remember the rare sequence like well at all for either of those um, no <laughs> so something from X-Men with in cap I can't even think of a lot of like X-Men rares right now for some reason either um, man if only you had played that set for a solid three or four days you'd know it better <laughs> you would think uh, it's pretty pretty forgettable outside of the Colossals that world <laughs> uh, that's fair man would that be like uh, Jubilee? Uh, she'd probably have like energy explosion, I guess. Probably. Was Iceman a rare? He's always got that. <laughs> so there's like Toad. Quake. That's just funny to me because the only Iceman in the set is is a super rare colossal, and he definitely oh, yeah. doesn't have incapacitate. He always, he always, he's always got that. He's, he does always. Have You're that. welcome for the free clip. <laughs> freezes, he freezes. People. <laughs> hmm. I ha I don't know. Those are not great clues. Yeah, those. That was a pretty bad set of clues. That is certainly the way it, the way it be sometimes. I will just guess one of the only other rares that I know from that set for sure, and say, um, oh, now I lost it. What what rare was it? I thinking. Uh, Sounds like, yeah, huh? let's go. Huh. I lost it. What is it like inside that brain? I don't want to know. I actually, I don't want to yeah. know. Um, man, what was a rare from that set? Uh, geez, we already did the two big ones, uh, Mesmero and Phantasma. Uh, <laughs> Iceman's apparently out. He wasn't a rare. <laughs> I think Avalanche was for sure, but I can't imagine why he would have Incapacitate. Um, hmm. Let me ask you this. Why would Avalanche have Pulse Wave? It's true. It's true. Because they didn't have Quake yet, that's why. <laughs> that is, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to think in AI now, too, but I can't. It wasn't a great that. rare scenario either. I believe in you guys. <laughs> to get it wrong, of course, I obviously want the point. I am a selfish human being at I heart. Wanna, so. I want to say it's got to be one of those Brotherhood people because um, I know they took up like a bulk of the rares. And How about instead of wanting to say it, you actually say it and make a guess, Simeon? Have you thought about that? Um... I, I know Jubilee was a rare, and I know Avalanche was a rare. And so those are the only two I can think of right now. So I'm going to go with Avalanche. I don't know. 
Avalanche locked in. No takesies, backsies. All right. I guess I'll go Jubilee and just hang my head. All right. Jubilee and Avalanche locked in. Before we go, I want to say here are a few rares that could certainly have incapacitate. If maybe you thought about it, I don't know. Um, Random, Morph, Frenzy, Uh Gambit, or, you know, Storm, who is also a rare in that set. Now, the rare... She probably did have... (laughs) She actually did. I'm looking at all of them now. She actually did. The rare in X-Men the Animated Series, which is 028, is Random. That is not the figure, though. Uh, But you are both wrong, so I get the point. Actually, from the Elseworlds set, it is 028 <laughs> Wonder Woman. Ah, uh, I forgot about the, the 15th anniversary yes. ones. Those were also Her. small sets. Okay. Dang it. Uh, we're on to the third and final round. Me and Simeon have a point. Paul, it's up to you to redeem yourself and tie this game. Uh, unlikely. <laughs> Don't say that. All, all the pressure. <laughs> all right. All right, Simeon. First clue, First final clue, round. round. Yeah. Ooh, number 11. Ah. Number 11 is going to be name of trait. This character does not have a trait. Uh, oh. Sweet. Sweet first clue. Um, well, let's try and... So we've got Wonder Woman and we've got Tony Stark Inventor. Is there is there some sort of a pattern that can be deduced I will from say the- uh, there is no theme. No, um... Tony Stark, a useless drunk in that storyline. Wonder Woman, I think she was like a politician or something. I can't remember. Um, but no, not not related, despite you may think so. Uh, there's nothing in relation any of these figures have in common. At least, not that I was thinking of when I was picking them out. So there, there is no theme. Sorry for being lazy this week and not making a theme. I do apologize in advance. Uh, I couldn't think of any other board games I hated or states that I maybe wanted to make a theme <laughs> off. I suppose Arizona would be really easy, actually. So, but we didn't. They obviously have Phoenix. That's like a clue right there. Not really. It's not a clue for this one because I didn't do a theme. But <laughs> so no special trait. Kind no of no trait that actually does narrow oh, it man. down. Just not in like a it good does. way. Because um, no. there's so many characters. Like even generics have traits. Uh, man. See, but like it's probably not an X Men. Right, so you're like, because basically every X Men has some form of trait. This is just me helping you out more. And a like, lot of stuff in Captain America also did. There was like, uh, all the, all the espionage trait that they handed out in that set. Mm-hmm. Man, uh, so it's got to be somebody that like just does like the one thing kind of, like someone that just punches. Um, I'm just gonna let's see. I'm just gonna th- think of someone that has a ton of stuff. I'll throw out Superman. Now, every Superman's got like the justice trait now. Uh, you know, justice. You know, <laughs> just Justice League thing. I don't know what it's called. Uh, you roll a d6. That's the one. Oh. I'll go with well, Beast. I'll go with Beast from X Men because I think he only has a special beast. damage. I don't think he has a trait. I played him a okay. lot. Okay, Simeon. Simeon, okay. Beast locked in. I don't know. How about uh, Jean Luc Picard for fun? Going for Jean-Luc Picard and the Beast. Some intellectuals right here. It is going to be neither of those. All right. All right. Second clue is going to be number 13. Number 13 is going to be opening movement power. This character starts special movement power. Oh. Called Beachcombing. What? Oh, Flex Metallo. Okay. Flex Metallo. We locked in Flex Metallo? Sure. Okay, Flex Metallo. Locked in. I have no clue. I've never 
I don't know this trait at all. Um, Once again, no trait. It's the special speed well, power. Yeah, Simeon. sorry. Pay attention. I, I literally gave you a clue that was no trait. <laughs> I got another. Uh, I'll say... Um, gosh, isn't that like the Darth whatever guy from that movie? Uh, they come the come the beach. Um, <laughs> ah. uh, that's pretty good. I'll just go with uh, Spider-Man because I cannot think of a single person. <laughs> one one for Fletch and Tallow, one for Spider-Man. So yeah. Spider-Man's been a guest each round. Sadly, it's not Spider-Man, but it's also not Flex Metallo. Third All and final right. round. Final Give me that clue. point, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be number two. Number two is going to be point value. This character clocks in at 30 points. Dune buggy. Oh. Paul has the dune buggy. Are we dune sure buggy. we locked in? Lock okay. that in. Locked in. That that does Simeon. make sense for a beach thing. Um, I'm trying to think of another another beach related superhero like Spider Man who swings from the beaches. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe try Batman. <laughs> Always on the beach. I'll go that with Batman. Sandman because we do have one from Earth. There is one I'm Sandman in my sure he's got a trait. But that's fine. He does have a trait. That's his whole thing. Is like having a trait. Uh, it is the dude buggy. Time Yay. game, Paul. All right. So I'm doing something new for the tiebreaker round. Instead of a figure, it is actually going to be an object. Simeon, I'm going to want you to put one through ten on your random number generator, and I will give you two clues. For this object. First one, round of guessing. Second one, and that's it. All right? All Sound good, guys? This is the new tiebreaker. Okay. First clue is number six. Number six is going to be whether or not it's a Marvel or DC object. It is a Marvel object. Ah. So, ten Mandarin rings, exospecs, Proxima Spear, Corvus Glaive, uh, all the stuff from EarthX. Ooh, that's a lot. Um, I didn't say, realize that that actually Beetle is kind Pod. of a lot. What was that? I said, I'll say Beetle Pod. Going with Beetle Pod. Locked in. Is there a beach comb object? There. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. I'll double down on the Earth X stuff and I'll say the Ock Arms. Lock arms, beetle pod, locked in. It is going to be neither of those. Round two. All right. Final clue for the tiebreaker is clue number one. Clue number one. Okay, we might actually have to do three clues. This is pretty terrible. Uh, it's heavy or <laughs> light. It is a heavy object. I think we're gonna. Do, I think we're gonna do three clues, and. I think I'm probably going to switch Marvel or DC to straight up set. I think that'd be a lot. Well, no, no, I'm not. Cause like some sets have like six objects. So and Thor's we'll just do modern, three. Right? Yes. Thor is so still modern. So many objects. Oh no. So it is, it is a heavy, it is a Marvel object. And I will allow a third round cause those are pretty terrible. This is still a half to bake, half to baked idea, believe it or not. So, well, at least, um, the fact that it's heavy does discount like all the WKO, prize uh objects um i think well isn't the uh the tire stack heavy oh it is the tire stack is I'll heavy. instantly instantly, instantly letting, letting simeon know he's wrong <laughs> uh did that come out that was in a whiz kids with wko had all marvel prizes so we'll say it's a marvel object uh, uh so sounds like i should say tire stack <laughs> going with the tire stack to further prove how wrong Simeon was <laughs> by guessing. They're like, yeah, all, all the Whiskey's objects aren't. I was just going off the top of my head. Um, <laughs> so I know there's some heavy, like Mighty Thor ones, like all the hammers and stuff like that were heavy. Uh, Earth X, I think most of them were light, with the exception. You guys of, actually like, both guessed and heavy and objects yeah. from Earth X. So. Yeah. so probably like the Goblin Gliders, the other heavy one, and then Mighty Thor has a bunch of heavies. Uh, so I'll. 
I'll say Goblin Glider. Okay. Uh, Goblin Glider and Tire Stack locked in. It is going to be neither of those. Third final round here for Tiebreaker. Last clue for real this time. Number five. <laughs> Number five. And I do want I do want everybody to know that clues one through ten, it's heavy or light. Number two is indestructible or not. Uh, number three is the equip and unequip. So whether or not it's uh, unequip, you know, drop, KO, uh, equip any or friendly. Uh, number four is set. Five is point value. Six is Marvel or DC. So five is the point value. I'm going to give you guys it's 10 points is the object. And then I'll go ahead and let you guys think about that. And I'll read the rest of these. Uh, seven is a standard power the object can grant. Eight is a combat ability. Uh, I'll consider that whether it be flight or an improved targeting ability or, you know, tiny size, like frog near, et cetera, stuff like that. Uh, and then 9 and 10 are both free plays. Heavy so also. It has the out, same uh, amount of free plays as um, whatever, the 20, which has four free plays. So I try to make this somewhat balanced, but also this is kind of the most information I can give you for an object um, besides maybe rarity, because some of them do have rarity, whether it be LE, uh, common, uncommon, rare, super rare, but most of them seem to be super rares now slash rares. So I that's let me know. But once again, most of the mighty Thor hammers were ten points, like uh, Thunder yeah, Strike and so. Mjolnir and all that. But I know Black Panther, all the gems were lights, and like even the gauntlets and stuff were lights. But those would be way out of the point range. Um, I'll take a stab with Yarn Bjorn. Going for yarn, yarn. The axe. Um, I'll go with what's Beta Ray Bill's hammer. The uh, Stormbreaker. Yeah, I'll go Stormbreaker. Okay, one for yarn, yarn. One for Stormbreaker. It is going to be neither of those. Sending oh. me home with the win. <laughs> you people at home might be like Calder. You made up a new rule to let you win. No. Yep. This was pretty much as fair and balanced. I'm not even at home. As, I, that's I what I was saying. That's I'm, exactly. I'm in studio and I'm saying uh, Calder made up rules to to win. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Simeon. Okay, Simeon. But uh, let us know if you if you think I robbed uh, Simeon or Paul here. We'll have Paul on the show again next week or whatever if it works, uh, so we can play a real round of Bad Samaritan or just a Bad Samaritan special episode. Um, but I think. The object idea for tiebreakers is pretty cool than just a figure. So, But let me know if you liked that or hated it. And if you hated it, direct all your hate towards me. I'm used to it. So it's very, very... What was the answer? Yeah, called it. Oh, People shoot. I didn't know. even say it. Oh, goodness <laughs> gracious. Yeah, yeah, wow. Okay, well, I was looking at the card the whole time. Uh, it's the S001 Blood Axe from uh, the Mighty Thor. That was going to uh, be my second guess. Um, yeah. My favorite, like, heavy equipable object, the old Blood Axe here. Battle Fury, Steel Energy, Exploit Weakness, baby. Such a good combo, yeah. All that ranting, I forget to give the uh, the actual answer. Excuse me, gentlemen, excuse me. <laughs> Calder, All right. I was excited uh, to win. I was excited to win. I haven't won a Bad Samaritan in, like, three or four episodes, at least, I don't think. I didn't win our 300th one, so it's been at least 13 episodes, or when, however many Bad Samaritans we've done. So, yeah, Calder win. I'm just going to write that down on my piece of paper, too. He deserves it. <laughs> I'm just excited. Get I got a point. I got on the board at least. Yeah, me too. Tie game. I like a tie game. You know, when a when a certain super fan, Lucas Van Hollen, doesn't come in and just get every single one right, uh, it's a lot. It's a lot more fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so moving on, we're gonna go ahead and do Community Tuesdays, and we're gonna head, uh, let Paul go. There are dozens of us. Community Tuesday's question, since we covered a non-MCU thread this last week, what non-MCU Marvel movie character would you like to see get a clicks version? What should they look like? Simeon. What what non-MCU Marvel movie character do you want to see in Hero Clicks form? I'd really like to see um, the animated version of like Young Justice. The, or not Young Justice, that's DC. Uh, the... <laughs> Young Avengers, that's the Marvel one, um, where it's like in the future and they're all like young offspring of Marvel heroes. Uh, 
I thought that was like a cool idea and like they're not like they're not like super powerful or like anything crazy but it's just like a cool a cool like collaboration of like you know there's like six or seven that you could easily do and then like the people they fight and stuff it'd be pretty easy oh like the ultron robots or whatever it was that yeah. they fought i think I think it was ultron that was cool I no i like that movie appears. it was good oh yes he does yes he does paul do you have an answer for this question uh sure i'd like to make the the green goblin from the first spider-man movie uh, oh yeah one of my favorite things to to Spider-Man's like my favorite uh, comic book movie, and one of my favorite parts of the movie is when Aunt May is saying her prayer, and then he just busts in the window, and he's like, "Finish it." <laughs> That's one of my favorite parts. So I'd have to have like a power that said "Finish it" on it. Jeez, uh, he was truly That's the awesome. foe of that movie. Yeah. Okay, Simeon. Simeon, I just you make life so much worse i can't this isn't a joke this isn't a joke for the show guys this is just being me being honest here because his i name cannot is stand defoe okay is defoe all right the... all right did you get uh, it called man. no i got it i got it by the way that was a scary costume but like without the mask he is more terrifying have really. you ever i mean have you ever seen the uh concept that they had before they decided to make it like a power suit kind of thing Green this little soft cap or no yeah it was like, like it was like a literal the... uh like animatronic like flesh mask thing oh, where like weird. the like eyebrows weird. and stuff could move but it was like yeah he was gonna like actually transform into this like monster creature kind of thing um there's a video online of it somewhere but they decided to go with like the battle armor kind of thing instead which makes way more sense for the plot okay I uh, I really enjoyed Andrew Garfield's Spider Man. Believe it or not, I thought I thought he was a fun Peter Parker. So I'd actually really like either an Andrew Garfield Spider Man or uh, the animated Into the Spider Verse a uh, Nicolas Cage Spider Man. Give me a second, Spider Man Noir. I would really like a Spider Man Noir with like the Rubik's Cube. You know, that'd probably be my favorite. Oh, yeah. That would be cool. Non MCU fi- like figure we could get. Uh, so let's go ahead. Read through. First one on Twitter. Vigilante Jedi Legend says, I've been dropping hints to WizKids games for a while about getting an Albert and LCD Pop figure like Tico and Wildchild. Literally no clue who Albert and LCD Pop are, but or D, sorry, pop off figure. But uh, thanks for the answer, my man. All right. First on Facebook, we've got Todd Butcher, who says Vinny Jones Juggernaut from uh, what was that, X3. <laughs> And then he, he puts like three, the, the notable quote yep. that people That's know. notable. Yeah. Uh, redacted <laughs> for the yeah. podcast. Uh, Andre on Twitter says, Snowflake and Safe Space should be a modern duo attack. Click space with, wait for it, eight attack with the whole dial, uh, 20 defense. Super great movement, special defense powers, no outwit protection. And then he said, like, no outwit protection, period. And then he's a suffer, period. <laughs> Jeez, man. <laughs> Uh. Yeah, those snow darts and uh, protective bubbles. Um, what would they think of next in comics? People that can throw ice and uh, people that can protect people with spheres. Man, should have thought that before. like 60 years ago. Uh, <laughs> Malcolm Rush <laughs> on Facebook says, Uncle Ben, very low defense, so it's easier to kill him. When he's KO'd, choose a character named Spider-Man on the board to get plus one to stats and willpower for the rest of the game. Can't be masterminded to, question mark. And that was a combination answer of Malcolm and Tiemus, So, mm. Loyal Mil- the Glenn, Loyal Miller says, uh, I mean, to pick just one, I feel like they are missing an opportunity to make Netflix's version of the Defenders. Whether or not you think those are actually MCU or non-MCU is up to you. It's about the loosest thread that they are connected by, but uh, a thread nonetheless. Yeah, I really like Jessica Jones. Uh, I think the Luke Cage was, like, too underpowered for, like, the character for my taste. I don't know. I just wanted yeah, to I see him like that. lift a car like up over his head at some point because he can do that, but he never did. All right, last but Are not least on Facebook, on Facebook okay. is Tyler Murin who says, "Since we're specifying Marvel, then the Runaways, Morgan Le Fay, or the Spider characters from Sony's Into the Spider Verse." 
And he says, however, for non-Marvel, I would love to get a Vin Diesel bloodshot and the sporting characters. So, Ooh. yeah, that's like the new... I don't know how close that is to the comics because I stopped reading the comics a while back and I have yet to see that movie. Yeah, I missed my chance to go see Bloodshot as well, but I do want to go see it. All right, last one on Twitter. Protagonist Tippy Toes Nuts says, I want a Galactus from Fantastic Four Rise of Silver Surfer just to watch the world burn. We want that that big fart cloud <laughs> silhouette Galactus to appear. Uh, space So, dust. right on. And that ends Community Tuesdays. Paul, before we let you go here, do you want to shout out your venue, shout out your uh, Facebook page a little bit here before you go? Sure. Yeah. So uh, search on Facebook, Hyper Two Sonic Custom Clicks. So it's Hyper Two Sonic is all one word with Tucson, like the city inside of it. And then uh, just a shout out to my teammates again. And hopefully uh, we can get some stuff going on again soon because I feel like I'm starting to forget all the rules already. So I need to start playing again. Yeah, it's rough. Absolutely feel that. You have a good one, my man. Thank you so much for being on the show, and keep up the great work. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye. All right. Simeon, let's go ahead and jump right into a Malcolm Rush question block. That's in Japan. Japan? No, 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 no. I can't go to Japan. All right, Malcolm Rush writes in, as you know, I live in Tokyo. Actually, I had forgotten that you were from Japan. It's almost like we have a... No. Uh, the <laughs> Olympic Games are supposed to be happening, but it's postponed. I was actually really excited for the Olympic Games this year, the Paralympic Games. Uh, the person who was making the art for it was Hiroko... Uh, Hir- I don't know how to say his name. Araki is whatever his last name. Cool guy. All right, so he's like, let's make a superheroes, villains, Olympic Games for fun. I'm going to try to make this Hero Clicks related. The questions weren't necessarily Hero Clicks related. They were just sort of superheroes and villains. Like a comic book podcast could have answered these. So I'm going to try to do my best to make these Hero Clicks related. Um, I've already failed, I know. So he says, number one, how would you separate teams by country, their regular teams, etc., or superhero slash villains, Olympic Games? Kind of like a Sonic versus Mario type deal right like they are not really from countries or whatever but like sonic and mario two different things would you separate it by marvel dc how would you do simeon how would you separate it i would do so i'd, I'd separate it a couple different ways because you'd have to have just like you have like the, the regular olympics then like the paralympics and like uh you know different stuff like that which i think they should have a secondary olympics called the super olympics where it's just like they don't test for drugs and you're just allowed to like boost however much you want um that's a side tangent though i won't go into my plans for the future uh so i said i'd separate it with uh the different properties so whether they're from marvel dc top cow uh indie image whatever um then like the respective countries that like the characters are from so um like dc could have i mean that's the olympics Right. Yeah. Can, like, yeah. Yeah. It's based on countries. That's the whole point. So yeah, that's obviously a pretty good. So DC <laughs> could have like their their uh, Brazilians, and Marvel could have theirs, and like you know, they they couldn't be on the same team, but they could uh, root for the same country, I guess. And then uh, it'd have to have like meta or not meta, like the whether they have powers or they are not powered. So if they're not powered, they they're most likely not even as good as normal Olympic athletes. If we're being realistic, right? So a character like Night Thrasher probably probably can't, you know, do anything better than most normal Olympic athletes. What does he do again? He just has a skateboard, right? So, yeah. And clubs. And clubs, sure. I'm pretty sure he's like. I don't remember, man. He's just such a lame character. So all you Night Thrasher fans out there, sorry. Uh, I said, let's separate it by team ability. Um, and then allow each team to have a wild card. So, like, Spider-Man could maybe jump on with the Avengers or team up with the X-Men if you wanted to. So I'd just, like, make it totally by team ability. And then, of course, country, sure. But I, I think team ability would be a cool way to do it. Um, it lets the WWE guys potentially have a superhero on their team, which would be pretty, pretty big for basically normal dudes. So... 
Number two, what sports do you want to focus on for your Olympic Games? Uh, which sports would you as like regular sports and then like non regular Olympic sports, like crazy souped up superpower versions? Yeah, so Simeon. I would have the shot put and then the super version would be the cannonball special shot put. So normal shot put is like see how far you can throw this ball. Um, or it's like a weighted disc or circle, what a uh, sphere. Um, yeah, you people know what shot put is. And then the cannonball special shot put would just be like the Hulk throwing somebody that can't get hurt very easily as far as they can. And so you get scored on accuracy, distance, and whether the person survived or not. It's a team wow. sport. Wow. So no I said before the show that we should we should totally yeah, it makes sense. No flyers. Like Wolverine is like three hundred pounds, right? With like an adamantium skeleton. Oh, so yeah. he is actually really heavy to throw. Um mm-hmm. but like Puck would also be a really great um figure, you know, to uh, to like to toss because that's his whole thing is that he's like mass density or whatever because he's short right so that'd be fun uh my sports i would actually like to see superheroes do sports where it's like their superpowers could not really physically help them you know because i feel like even if you could use telekinesis it would be cheating you know like you can't be like oh yeah i'm a curling champion well professor x no it's that's that's like unless you're using telekinesis to use the broom and not the curl like we'd have to make it I don't know, somehow not be able to to make a a special curling. Like if he wants to use the broom, sure. But like, I think curling would be great. So like, you know, Quicksilver, super speed is not going to help you in curling. It's, it's all technique, baby. So obviously alpha flight wins curling. They do almost every year. Uh, I had skeet shooting um, because like Punisher, normal dude, but he's accurate. Right. Um, And that's just like an over under shotgun. And I hate over unders. But, like, that's what they use for the Olympic sport. That's what they train on. Blah, blah, blah. It's accurate. Ooh, whatever. So, skeet shooting. Um, but I think that'd be really fun. And then, if you ever do this, um, you shoot skeet. But if it breaks into two pieces, um, if you have a pump shotgun, we normally allow you pump it again and try to break each small piece. And I love doing that. Or, when they do skeet shooting, where they throw up three clay pigeons. That's what the skeet is called. Uh, clay pigeon. So, it's a little clay disc. If you haven't seen this Olympic sport. Uh, they like they throw three in the air and you try to boom, 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 shoot all three of them. So that's really cool. So, yeah, I feel like that gives people like Punisher and Edge. Sure. You know, he's a gun guy. And then maybe Green Arrow, Hawkeye. They're accurate, but they don't use firearms a lot, you know, and obviously they would be in archery anyways. I mean, it's, there's quite literally a sport for them. So, yeah. Um, and I also, also give the WWE guys once again, <laughs> they'd have they'd have a chance. I did. Also I don't know have, who. Uh... Like, Ice sculpting, chess, and synchronized swimming as my other sports. It just, is chess actually an Olympic sport? Is it really? I do not do they count it. That's but, uh, could have gone with esports sport. too. Those will soon be combined into e- the Olympics. Yikes. Yikes. All right. Number three. How would you change those sports to allow superpowers? Like I said, I would want sports that would have uh, almost no effect, whether or not you have superpowers or not. You know, like equestrian make beast boy be the horse like like what's <laughs> how are you going to change how well you can ride a horse you know and make it jump i guess telekinesis again but animal uh man. either way probably someone animal can, man. Like, speak to animals or something yeah yeah i don't know you know like bobsledding like i don't know how you cheat at bobsledding maybe it's just showing my ignorance for olympic you, sports you but loosen like, a bolt according to cool runnings is that <laughs> oh i forgot about that thank you so, do you have around. any idea for um? So, how would you change those sports? Yeah, the I would just keep the sports the same. Um, but like I said, like I would have a category for like powered and non-powered people. So, um, like you could you could play the sport. Like if you're playing uh, like the shot putting one, it's not uh, it's not like Daredevil trying to throw uh, Amadeus Cho. It's you know, I mean that that's one category is like the regular shot put. So it'd be Daredevil. Oh sure. Except he like technically a regular has human. a power, but he's not like super strong. So it'd be it'd be like yeah. a normal human throwing a normal shot put, and then the super powered version would be uh, just harder, I guess. So it would just be split. Uh, so I'd keep the sports the same. There you go. You have it there here first, folks. So who should get? 
gold, silver, and bronze in those games. I wrote down uh, Living Tribunal should take home the gold, Silver Surfer should get second place, and Bronze Tiger would be coming in third. As always. Yep. Never, yep. Never the winner um, in all the martial arts tournaments. Uh, so for gold, I didn't put silver and bronze because there's just too many options. Um, and there's a whole series of comics where Justice League fights Avengers and stuff. So fans voted. Uh, I put for gold in the categories, the Cannonball special shot put would be Colossus and Wolverine because they've practiced it a lot. So they've got to be pretty good. Um, for the ice sculpting sport, uh, some ice powered person like uh, Iceman or Killer Frost or someone like that, I would imagine. Um, then for chess, I put Batman just because you need a, a strategic mind more than, uh, I don't know, than powers. And then for synchronized swimming, I put Jamie Madrix, multiple man. He could just. Mm. Make his, he could be his own swim. I team. guess you. He really would be the number one synchronized swimmer, wouldn't he? Would he? We'll see in the next Adam, question, Calder. Adam, who would get gold? <laughs> okay, so I actually said who should get gold, bronze, silver, and then he he probably knew I was going to answer it in like such a jerk way, or, like non-serious. So then he's like, who would actually win gold, silver, and bronze? You know. Captain America is technically the highest level Olympic level athlete, but as far as superheroes go, he's really not like the strongest, but he's actually a really, really good acrobat. If you watch, if you read, not watch, but read any of the old Captain America comics, nine times out of 10, he actually doesn't do a ton of weightlifting, but he does a majority of acrobatics work. He, honestly, pick up almost any old Captain America comic and there's pretty to be a, like, it's either going to start with him like training or like halfway through he'll be like clearing his head in the Avengers training compound and he's almost always doing acrobatics work so I think Captain America however may not be the best male acrobatic since there's people like Nightwing out there Dick Grayson who's actually an acrobat so uh, Dick Grayson I think would win in male acrobatics I think Captain America would definitely get the silver and then I would say Spider-Man getting the bronze just because I feel like he's naturally kind of acrobatic with the swinging and everything but he doesn't necessarily train for it so that's one category I have thought out. Simeon. I think uh, Superman prob or uh, Captain America would probably win the discus because uh, he's good at throwing discs. Oh, uh, I don't know. Why did I not think? Oh my gosh! All right. <laughs> uh, so wow, who cool. would actually win gold, silver, and bronze in my sports? Um, so in reality, the Cannonball Special would be just the Cannonball Special shot put would just be won by Superman and whoever he's throwing. Because he's like the strongest. The I mean, not not the strongest, but uh, let's be realistic. The strongest that's going to show up and take the time to do this. Because um, he did race the Flash for charity, so why not? Uh, somebody that would actually win the ice sculpting. It would come down to like artistic ability more than uh, someone with just like uh, the ability to carve ice. So like Wolverine could carve ice really well, but he's probably not the most artistic guy out there. Um, no. And then I put for chess, I put Reed Richards because I don't know. I just think he's the smartest guy in most comics. Um, he's always doing stuff with his brain. And then, do you want to know who would actually win gold in uh, synchronized swimming, Calder? Who is that, Simeon? Professor Xavier. Do you know why, Calder? Because. He could just why he could just connect everyone's mind into one like big mind, and then they're completely synchronized. Yeah, it's so like a big mind, so like some kind of mega mind, you or would like say? a uni mind or something. I, mm -hmm. no, I hate that one more than mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been real. It's been fun. Hasn't been real. Fun. Oh wait, sorry. Uh, how uh, how would you try to keep the villains from not cheating? during the games but this would be malcolm this would be like the the underlying story like how do we keep normal people from not cheating right have them pee in a cup Ob obviously that's how you can tell if dr doom is up to no good and just don't uh, let no the russians compete don't let the russians compete yeah i mean like omega red is quite literally an energy vampire i mean mm, who's gonna let that guy in, into discus or even like the flag thing you know like the ribbons i feel like omega red would be good at that with his tendrils you know <laughs> the little, little like the ribbon dance they do yeah 
he seems like the kind of person that would dance that's for sure oh totally russians they love ballet don't they have black widow whatever you know i don't know the villains the villains can cheat because they're villains and they can get disqualified by normal cheating rules i guess yeah i would just say like i've already forgot to make these hero clicks related i'm so sorry guys like completely <laughs> making sure they're not uh... over on points boom got it <laughs> Woo! Get it. we did it check the keywords yeah um yeah how would you keep the villains baron not zemo cheating? hey he doesn't, have, he doesn't have masters of evil he can't be on thunderbolts oh, oh no you know baron zemo's trying to cheat over here um i would just i wouldn't try to keep them from cheating i would yeah i'd enforce like the normal rules like if you see that like lex luther's like strack being like rocket boosters to his feet for like the hundred meter dash then you're like hey that's cheating but otherwise, I mean, if they can get away with it, then, you know, that's that's part of their power, is that they're villains. They're evil. I agree. I agree, I agree, I agree, I agree. All right, number seven, what else did you do to make the games fun and successful? So instead of making it, you know, 300-point teams, you know, to make it more fun, let's do Golden Age, where you have to have at least one Golden Age non-carded figure. So, like, this would be, this would relate to, like, a rookie of a character right so through time and space however these olympic games are happening uh you have to have one really bad terribly sculpted figure where it just looks you know threatening to look at and um has terrible stats and you have to put them in charge of one event so like one one team of your justice league has to be some old terrible like flash with an eight attack one damage hypersonic you know it's like yeah he's fast but but man, it's rough. It's rough. So, you, know, so you really have to try to play to strengths. I'm going to go the opposite way. I'm going to say make it meta, and you allow all the ID cards and Colossal Retaliation. So if, like, let's say Superman's, like, uh, in a race, and he's losing, and then he just, like, gets on his little ID card phone, and calls up the Flash, and he gives him a little speed boost. And, oh. uh, you know, if they're, like, Let's say Batman's in like a fencing match, and uh, I don't know who's the swords person. Um, uh, literally the swordsman. swordsman. Yeah, uh, he's, he's Marvel. <laughs> uh, we'll we'll say they're competing against each other, and uh, swordsman gets a point on Batman, and then he's just like, "Oh, you got a point on me." Well, like that means you damaged me, and then the atom just like bursts through the ceiling and punches swordsman in the head. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like retaliation. Haha. He, he has like, games you can have unfair advantages in in such a game. Oh yes, yes. Surter comes out of nowhere, deals everybody. Blink. Whoa, dude, what the heck? I didn't no, even do nothing yet. Yeah, the, Surter, you know. The most boring uh super powered like event would probably be any of like the normal track like running events. Because it would just, oh, yeah. it'd either be over really fast, or it would just be like a blur, and you'd have to have super crazy, like speed cameras to be able to catch anything. I mean, right. I don't, I don't even think they could catch like the top tier speedsters. So you just have to take their word for it. Flash uh, would be I like, it's... I won that one. I had a. They do this in the boys. Ah, uh, what's his face? A train? A train. Yep, A train. Sorry. A train against some random, he's like an orange guy, whatever. He's mm -hmm. also fast. And like probably faster than A train when he's not doing illegal drugs. So, yeah, so it'd be something like that where it's like all this hype and it takes less than a second. And then it's like, go home. It's over. That's super speed. Sorry. It's not fun to watch, you know? It's cool to like make up rules for time warping and whatever with super speed, but it's not fun to watch. Yep. Yeah. Basically. That's all I got. And that is that's Malcolm Rush's question block. So thank you so much, Malcolm, for writing in. Uh, we can go ahead and move on to a Jedi Legend Hero Clicks tip of the week. You don't want to sell me death sticks. I don't want to sell you death sticks. You want to go home and rethink your life. I want to go home and rethink my life. All right, I'm just going to read what he says, and if it's wrong, it's not my fault. All right, I'm no longer going to have an opinion on any <laughs> Heroclix tips. I'm not going to tell people how to play this game. All right, so if you got a problem with what I'm about to read, 
Jedi Legend at Mark Legend 007 on Twitter. Complain to him, not me. Thank you. Good night. Oh, wait, I still have to read it, though. Uh, TK, two of two. Involving characters, it's a max of six range, and you require the triangle of sight. You can move them a max of six, but the TKer must have line of fire to the piece and the destination square. The piece must also have line of fire to the destination square. Now, I don't care if that might be wrong. And in which case, <laughs> it's like I said, uh, not my fault. And with that... Dial H for Heroclix is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all of the the Justice League stuff and uh, probably sometime soon the uh, Black Widow stuff. So check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.